Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, I am going to discuss about anisakiasis. So in this video, I am going to explain to you just the introduction part of the anisakiasis and also going to give you the definition, treatment, symptoms and also the life cycle of the anisakis parasite. Okay. So let us discuss each one of them step by step. Okay. So coming to the anisakiasis. Anisakiasis is a parasitic disease which is mainly caused by a parasitic nematodes called anisakis. And this anisakis is a parasitic nematode which belongs to the kingdom animalia and they belongs to the phylum nematoda. And how this anisakiasis disease has been caused by eating under processed fishes that's nothing but improperly cooked fishes okay and normally anisakiasis disease has been discovered i mean it was it has been recognized in 1960s and the scientist name of the scientist has been not properly known so if you see in the case of internet also there is no proper scientist which has been given for you so it has been not proper not properly known okay it is unknown the name of the scientist is unknown and coming to the in next 1970s 10 cases has been filed based on this based on this type of disease known as anisakiasis okay so totally 10 cases has been filed and this 10 cases has been filed in the japan because this disease can be mostly seen in the japan country only okay so normally when this person will get infected with this anisakiasis disease then what's up what happens is that you have i think you people will have the basic idea about immune system right so uh, to know about the immune system properly uh, we know about the antigens as well as the antibodies so foreign antigens will get attacked to our body and then what happens immediately that antibodies will be produced against to the antigens right so here if you take antigens as a parasite so the parasite will come from the external environment and then will enter into your body right so when it enters into your body then this will access foreign antigens so when this access foreign antigens then what happens immediately the antibodies will be produced so here which type of antibody is produced ige antibody has been produced this ige is nothing but immunoglobulin e antibody has been produced against to the parasite so when this uh, antibodies has been produced against to this parasite i mean the type of antigen then what happens is that it causes allergic conditions so one of the uh, best allergic conditions like you can you can take anaphylaxis and not only anaphylaxis you can also take uh, you know rashes as well as itching like this you can take allergic conditions so this is about just the introduction part you have to know about this anisakiasis so coming to the definition anisakiasis is a fish born zoonosis caused by the ingestion of third stage larva of nematodes belonging to the genus anisakis present in the fish or cephalopods following its penetration in the human gastrointestinal tract the parasite can cause adverse effects so you can understand this definition after the completion of the life cycle so i am going to explain you the treatment as well as the symptoms and this definition properly after the completion of the life cycle so if you understand the life cycle then you can you easily understand this definition so now let us learn about the life cycle of this so in this video let us discuss about the life cycle of the anisakiasis so coming to the anisakiasis life cycle it includes primary hosts secondary hosts and third one is incidental hosts and these incidental hosts are also called as tertiary hosts okay so coming to the life cycle this life cycle begins with unembryonated eggs so from where this unembryonated eggs has been released this unembryonated eggs has been released by the fecus matter so this fecus matter will be released by the human beings as well as the marine animals so let us begin this life cycle from the unembryonated eggs so come into the life cycle here this unembryonated eggs what happens is that here it is called as unembryonated because the larvae is not present in this in this inside this cytoplasm of this unembryonated egg hence it is called as unembryonated egg okay so within two to three days what happens is that this unembryonated egg will get transformed into embryonated egg right it will get transformed into embryonated egg so why it is called as embryonated egg because here the larva has been present and that larva which has been present in this embryonated egg is called as l2 larva so why it is called as unembryonated egg because the larva is not present inside the cytoplasm of the egg hence it is called as unembryonated egg right so why it is called as embryonated egg because the l2 larva has been present i mean the normal larva has been present inside the cytoplasm of the egg hence it is called as embryonated egg so the larva which is present inside the cytoplasm of this embryonated egg is known as l2 larva okay so coming to the next step what happens in the next step is that hatching occurs that's nothing but this uh, embryonated egg 
right inside the l2 inside the l2 larva has been present right so now hatching occurs so when the hatching occurs what happens immediately the l2 larva which is present inside this embryonated egg will come out will get protruded out right so you, you have to know that all of this process occurs in the you know occurs in the water i mean li like if you take oceans or else a lake or else any ponds like that all of this process occurs in the uh, you know water only right when this occurs hatching occurs immediately what happens the larva which is present inside this embryonated egg will come out right and now this that l2 larva has a capacity uh, you know it has a capacity to swim it exhibits a property of free swimming right as it exhibits a property of free swimming then what happens is that immediately this l2 larva will get consumed by the crustaceans even the crustaceans will also be present in the water only so you can take crustaceans like you know uh, what are the examples like crustaceans you can take like crabs lobsters crayfishes uh, and krills what not you can take many uh, you know ostracods like that you can take many crustaceans so here remember the crustaceans and here this crustaceans acts as a primary host so what i have said you here uh, primary host secondary host as well as a tertiary host right so in this way this will act as a primary host which one crustaceans will act as primary host so why it is called as primary host because it carries uh, l2 larva so now finally this l2 larva will enter into the gut of these crustaceans right so finally when it enters into the gut of the crustaceans then what happens is that it feeds the material which is present inside the gut of the crustaceans so when it feeds upon the food material of this which of this crustaceans gut then what happens is that immediately it gets mature in the in, in the sense it forms it it get transformed into l3 larva and now this l3 larva is in mature form but if you see in the case of this l2 larva it is immature in form right what is mean by what is the main difference of immature form of larva and mature form of larva so here if you see the cases this mature larva, mature form of larva is nothing but it has a capacity to copulate you know it has a capacity to copulate with another gender i mean if for example if you take this as a male uh, even the male as well as the female worms will be developed right so uh, when the both male as well as the female will get uh, mature then immediately it starts copulation to form the eggs like that it, it becomes mature okay so in, uh, so uh, so coming to the time of the maturation immediately the crustaceans will also get died because its life span will get completed so uh, during that life span of the completion what happens is that this l3 larva will be present inside these crustaceans right so when these crustaceans will lead to death immediately what happens is that these crustaceans will be consumed by this secondary hosts so these are called as secondary hosts which one the fishes and squids are called as secondary hosts so this secondary hosts i mean the fishes as well as the squids will consume this dead crustaceans okay these are the dead crustaceans which will be consumed by these fishes as well as the squids right and th remember these are called as secondary hosts so these are called as primary hosts and these are called as secondary hosts so now what happens so here i have said you that this crustaceans inside the crustaceans this l3 larva you know that mature l3 larva will be present right so immediately when this secondary host will consume that l3 sorry this crustaceans what happens immediately that l3 larva which is present inside the gut will be uh, will, will also enter into the fishes right because this will be consumed by the fishes only so uh, the l3 larva will finally enter into the fishes as well as the squids i mean whichever it consumes okay then what happens immediately then immediately within hours larvae will migrate to the muscle tissues of these fishes as well as the squids that's something but this uh, larvae will migrate to the whole parts of the body where the total body parts of the fishes will get infected right so now what happens that larva which is present inside that fish has a capacity of which plays a major two roles either it can enter into the human beings or else either it can enter into the shark that's nothing but uh, firstly let us discuss about the shark then let us enter into the case of human beings so normally we know that shark will consume upon the small fishes like if you see here these are the fishes right so now this fishes consists of l3 larva l3 larva which has been which will consume this dead crustaceans right so it consists of l3 larva so now this l3 larva which is present inside these fishes will be consumed by these large fishes i mean that's nothing but marine animals so what are the best examples of marine animals like you can take whale seal sea lion as well as you can also take shark like that all of this shark will consume this fishes as well as the squids which i have said you here so now what happens finally then what happens is that this l3 larva which is present inside these fishes will enter into this marine animals gut of the marine animals then what happens then in this uh, gut of the marine animals this uh, the male as well as the female worms will get copulated 
So when these female worms as well as the male worms will get copulated, what happens immediately the eggs will be released outright. So that eggs will be released out through the fecus matter which will be released by these marine animals. And that fecus matter will consist of an again unembryonated eggs. Again that fecus matter as well as this unembryonated eggs will get separated. And again this uh, life cycle will get repeated like this. So this is about the first case where you can take in the case of marine animals. So coming to the second case human beings so in the case of human beings what happens is that we know that we will consume fishes right so if the human beings will consume improperly cooked fishes you know improperly cooked fishes then what happens is that immediately the worms which are present inside that gut of the fishes will enter into the human beings intestine of the human beings gastro intestinal part of the human beings then immediately what happens the human being will also get infected with this uh, you know with these worms which worms and sacus worms so when this uh, when the intestine of the human beings will get infected with this type of anisakis worms then immediately what happens is that fecus matter will be released out as well as the copulation and the eggs will be released inside the intestine of the human beings only then what happens human beings will release fecus matter right and that fecus matter don't forget that fecus matter will consist of unembryonated eggs and again the total life cycle will get repeated like this so in this way the life cycle will get completed right in the two cases so here remember this human beings as well as this marine animals will act as incidental hosts <coughs> so finally we have completed about the three hosts primary host secondary host incidental host where these incidental hosts are called also called as tertiary hosts so coming to here these are crustaceans are called as primary hosts these fishes as well as these kids are called as secondary hosts and the human beings as well as these marine animals are called as incidental hosts in this way the total life cycle will get repeated so now let us discuss about the definition treatment as well as the symptoms for a person who will get infected with this type of disease known as anisakiasis. So see here the definition properly. Anisakiasis is a fish-borne zoonosis caused by the ingestion of the third stage larva of nematodes. Right? So nematodes are nothing but the fishes which I have said you like. Fishes and the squids are called as nematodes. And that ingestion of the third stage larva of nematodes. I have said you that the crustaceans will consist of the L3 larva, right? L3 larva is nothing but the third stage larva. L2 larva is nothing but the second stage larva. Okay, second stage larva are called as L2 larva and the L3 larva are called as third stage larva. And the third stage larva will finally enter into the nematodes. Nematodes are nothing but the fishes as well as the squids, which I have said you in the before in the life cycle process only, right? Belonging to the genus Anisakis, that's nothing but within the gut, this Anisakis has been present, right? And which are present in the fish or cephalopods, which you can take. And following its penetration in the human gastrointestinal tract, that's nothing but when the human will consume that fishes, improperly could fishes, then what happens? Immediately it enters into the human gastrointestinal tract and the parasite causes adverse effects in the human beings. Like this, the human beings will get infected with this type of disease known as Anisakiasis disease. So in this way, the definition can be explained. So I hope the definition will be understood for you people. So now let us learn the treatment as well as the symptoms. So the treatment which can be given for the person who is infected with this type of disease called anisakiasis are prednisolone as well as and normally if you see here olapatadine, hydrochloride as well as the albendazole. So these three are the medicines which can be given for a person who is infected with this type of disease known as anisakiasis. So coming to the symptoms. So if you see the symptoms, the best symptoms you can see in the person who is infected with this disease called uh, anisakiasis are abdominal pain, nausea, vomitings, abdominal distension as well as the diarrhea, blood and mucus in the stools. I mean whenever you excrete the stools then immediately the blood as well as the mucus will also get secreted along with the stools. Okay, along with the fecus I mean stools are nothing but fecus where you all know that and uh, mild fever. So these are the symptoms you can see in this person. So this is about the uh, introduction part of the anisakiasis definition, treatment, symptoms as well as the life cycle of this anisakiasis. So I hope this, this video has been very helpful for you and if it is helpful then immediately subscribe my channel and also like share my videos. Thank you. And also if you have any doubts regarding this topic you can also comment in the comment box. The reply will be given for you soon. Thank you.